Hello and welcome to Outlook Bibliophile. Today we have with us a Booker shortlisted author for his novel Reef, Ramesh Gunasekara. He has written numerous other books and short stories and he moved to the United Kingdom in 1971. Mr. Gunasekara, thank you so much for speaking to Outlook. His latest novel is Suncatcher. But before we get into Suncatcher, we are going to talk about something very important. He keeps referring to two very important terms, time and memory. Why is that? Time and memory, well, that's because what, that's what we're made of, time and memory, it seems to me. Um, and that's what writing, for me, is all about. It's a negotiation with memory. Um, it's done in time. And to me, that's all about being human, really. And writing has to come from that, it has to speak to us through those terms. Is it also because of the reason that you moved out of your country at a very young age? That's just accidents of life, really. Um, I was quite young, but I travel. I, mean, I was very lucky enough to travel when I was very young. Uh, my parents were lucky enough to, to, you know, get jobs abroad and so on. So, um, traveling seemed to me kind of normal, in a way. Um, and when I left Sri Lanka to live in another country more permanently, it wasn't out of my choice. It was, it was just because you know, my parents had moved for jobs and so on. And that's, so I moved along with that. And then I've been drifting around. As a result, I get stuck in places. Uh, jumping on to uh, Suncatcher now, it's yeah. a beautiful story of love, compassion, friendship between two young boys, yeah. Jay and Cairo. I'm pretty sure our listeners would like to listen from you more than me about the story, what exactly it is, um, the families they come from, and the time it is set in. It's a story set in 1964 yeah. in Sri Lanka, Ceylon as it was then. Uh, and we may talk about why 1964, but let's just say for the moment, yeah. it's, the, it's the year that sort of came into this book. Um, I, was, I wanted to set it in the 60s. Um, the reason for that is partly to do with the fact that I was a child in the 60s. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to draw on that, what I could remember of a place in a time that doesn't really exist anymore because obviously places change over time. And then it became an important moment because of the politics of the yeah. time. But I wanted to go in a story uh, really to this previous period, if you mm. like. My last book was a book called Noontide Toll, mm. which is set in the immediate uh, aftermath of, of, the, of the end of the war. Yeah. And so it was very much to do with that moment. So I wanted to, I wanted to go to a period before mm. that and see whether that was in any say, sense pivotal. Mm. Um, and it was, of course, yeah. as every moment in a way is, yeah. as the moment we're living in now. Uh, there are so many huge changes going on around us, some of which we can see, some of which we can't, but all of which will have huge repercussions. Repercussions someday, yeah. Um, and for these boys in 1964, <laughs> uh, big things happened to them, all things around them. Uh, and I wanted to explore that. Mm -hmm. uh, the families they come from, you asked about, well, they come from very, very different families. So uh, my narrator is a boy called Cairo, yeah. and he comes from, uh, let's, let's say, a, a more ordinary family, yeah. except that it's not at all ordinary. So uh, his father is a sort of armchair Marxist, he's Trotskyite, yeah. but uh, doesn't actually do anything. Uh, with his politics, um, <coughs> his mother works uh, in the media, media for, for the station. radio station, uh, Radio Ceylon, as it was then. Um, and the other boy, Jay, comes from a very well-to-do, very privileged family, mm -hmm. and they meet and they have a friendship. But my, you know, what I wanted to explore was the fragility mm. of that friendship, as well as. Uh, it's life-changing quality for both of them. Um, do you also think that, you know, Cairo, because as, as much as I have understood, he, he, I actually realized that he developed a near infatuation for almost mm -hmm. everything uh, that, that Jay possessed, so to speak, you know. Yes. And Jay was, to him, 
Jay was more free, you know, more yes. adventurous. Yes. Something uh, that yes. perhaps he always aspired for. Yes. You want to shed more light on that? Well, yeah, it is that. It is. I mean, it's and maybe connected to the Sri Lankan society a little bit. Um, oh, you're asking really deep questions <laughs> now for this this moment when I'm just beginning to grapple with what is this book about. But yeah, it is. It is that relationship. I, what I think is, Jay is the kind of friend that. I think we all have. Yeah. If we haven't had a friend like Jay, we've always wanted a friend like mm. Jay. Somebody who is, who just seems to be Very better than, old. you know, just a hero. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and having a hero for a friend is a very difficult thing. You yeah. know, it doesn't really work, <laughs> work like that. Uh, but there's a discrepancy in the ages. So Cairo is younger mm. um, and he does hero worship yeah, Jay. Yeah. Um, and the stories, I suppose, about how he he uh, understands Jay a bit more and begins to see Jay's flaws. Mm. And I suppose, just as we do with our friends, mm. we see their flaws, and then there's another journey we go on in which we accept yeah. that as well. The flaws, yeah. So I guess that's that's the journey, and. Um, it's an important one for me. Um, uh, I mean, I've had Jay friends, yeah, yeah. Um, Jay, oh, Jay friend particularly. Um, so it, it is it is exploring that and um, how it relates to the rest of society. I think, I hope, as novels do, that it, that I've managed to shape it in such a way that it does does have some resonance. And of course, you know. Um, the tension between um, freedom, as you were ex expressing it as well, freedom and, and control, freedom and the restraints of society, freedom and privilege, uh, and then the opposites of that privilege and the sort of uncaring aspects of privilege. I think those are there in society as well, mm -hmm. the way we treat each other, the way we treat each other across social divides. Yeah. Um, and part of Cairo's journey is, is his big, his political awakening, I yeah. suppose, his understanding of the politics of everyday life. Yeah. Never mind his father's politics, yeah. Yeah. but yeah. the politics of everyday life. That you know, when even in a relationship of friendship, there is there's power that's yeah. exchanged, yeah. absolutely, yeah. Uh, and those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. um, one very significant uh, theme. Uh, of Suncatcher is uh, the class divide, as you've been referring to. Uh, you've often talk about, talked about the relevance of a certain book and not really limiting the relevance to a particular time period. Uh, how do you how do you see the relevance of Suncatcher in the modern day Sri Lanka? Well, I think it's probably not just the mod. I, what I hope is yeah. it's not just the modern day Sri Lanka. It's the modern day in many places. Um, the theme of friendship mm. and the tensions and, and the, the fragility of friendship, as I was saying, is something that is we all have wherever we, we live. Um, but what became apparent to me as I was writing the book, or after I finished writing the book almost, is, is how different moments in time, which seem so special uh, and so significant, in society as well, political moments even, and seem unique, actually are not. Yeah, yeah. Uh, very similar moments happen almost all the time. It's almost as though you know these, we have these cameras and they're taking these frames of pictures, but they're all, you know, it's like every moment is a slight change and every moment seems terribly, terribly important. So, you know, um, 1964, these boys are growing up around them, unknown to them almost, the world is changing, the political world is changing, new al political alignments are being made. And, you know, on the, on the sort of day-to-day -day detail, like in the sun catcher, as these boys, well, while they're cycling off somewhere or driving off somewhere, in parliament you have MPs crossing the floor, changing the balance of power yeah. in parliament, the government is about to fall. Well, you know, this could be this could be Sri Lanka in the this last couple of years. <laughs> yeah. 
it could be Britain yeah, in the last yeah, couple absolutely. of years. Yeah. And the parallels are just incredibly yeah. uh, uh, clear, I think. Um, and as somebody was telling me, you know, if, if, you, if you just read the sort of opening bit yeah, about yeah, it, yeah, yeah. you know, schools are closed, government in disarray, the religious right on the rise, um, okay, so left-wing parties yeah. not quite sure where to go. I mean, yeah. that's, that's today. current 2019. <laughs> <laughs> then just just count any country, and it's it's uh, the Pretty same much. scenario, almost Pretty the much. same scenario. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to get into uh, the ending no, of. No, uh, not. Yeah, let's that's not do that. <laughs> that's, that's not uh, for this interview. Uh, but uh, since I have completely read it, so I can I can say that it's a beautiful book. It is it is available online and it is available at uh, the bookstores near you. Uh, Mr. Gunasekara, always a pleasure speaking to you. Lovely. Thank you very much for this interview.